So now, like, now but it, it took me this much time to be able to be, go to the gym. Right. Because my bowels were so wacky. Right. You know, you in the gym trying to run and you got to fall. You right. Know, so, I mean, that's part of me who are taking one step at a time. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I think that you've made tremendous strides. Um, I think that you've been a, a, a huge and a good ambassador just in terms of stroke and, you know, how we really need to take care of ourselves. Like, there's so many different things out there. Like, like Tom Joyner has the take a loved one to the doctor day. Like, do, do you see? I did that before I ever had a stroke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I kind of understood that, you know, you know, to, to you definitely, this this is a, the, the, another thing nobody talks about, the finances of it. I, I work in hospital. So it's, big, it's, big, it's big money, it's big business. A lot of us don't want to die because we feel like we can't afford it. Yeah. Or you don't want to be like, I'm okay right now. But, man. There's so many ways to get healthcare out there now. Yes. Um, yeah. Even if you feel like you can't afford it. Yeah. Like, there's so many ways to get good healthcare out there and at the end of the day, even if you don't have the insurance, like it's just your life. Like yeah. you gotta go to the doctor. Like, go. Something like life threatening like that, they're not gonna turn you away because I mean, with, with the money that they're getting from the government, from Medicare, Medicaid, and whatnot, they can't turn you away. Exactly. So for for me, my my lifeline came because I'm a vet, so uh, I was able to get my care from the VA, and and ironically, my stroke happened in Denver. Happens to be the best rehab facility in the VA. Okay. So I'm like, okay, God, if you're gonna get a stroke, <laughs> I guess you go to somewhere. Right. Go to the best place you that that has got the, the record record for the best recovery right. of uh, stroke patients. So I went through the um, the whole process, man, and learning how to walk again and and getting back up on my feet and ultimately walking out of the hospital. So. Uh, it was it was definitely a, a, a powerful moment, you know, and a, and a triumphant, you know, to say the least. Right. I mean, I I can see how it's like totally shaped and reshaped your being right now, um, in terms of how you can move around, how you can take care of yourself. Like, what is your ultimate takeaway from it, and what is the biggest thing that you want people looking at this to take away from? Um, uh, my 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 biggest takeaway. Is this? And I laid in that bed, and I was like, "God, what you want me to learn?" Man? And it was real simple. I and mean, I spent my whole career trying to get out to the thing, whatever the success is, the the big thing way out there. And I was reduced to a man that couldn't take a single step. And so you start going, well, "What's success?" Well, success is the step because if you could take a single step, you could take a million single steps. Right. And so, as I laid in the hospital bed, I was like, that's it. You know, it's not shooting way out there. It's shooting right here in front of you. Take that step and do that. Take that step every day toward your goal and you'll win. Right. And, and, and be thankful. Right. Because the the stuff that we take for granted is a promise to us. Right. You know, to get up in the morning and put your feet on the side of the bed and stand up. Right. Couldn't do that. When you, like, when you really think about, you know, obviously, you know, the things that you could have lost in the process, and, I mean, obviously, your life being the biggest thing, but mm -hmm. then you think about the amazing career that you've led. Like, did any of that play into your mind, like, as far as, like, work and... I was, like, I was trying to get back to work. Right. So, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm, I'm in rehab. I ain't walking. I'm still trying to catch a show right. in a week and a half. I'm like, so can y'all get me out of here? And and I get that piece of it because like that's your life. And like for I me, was, like I had no the best thing I had was ignorance. I had no idea how bad it was. Right. And they didn't really tell me. Like my doc kinda, you know, they would explain, you know, the situation of course. Right. But they didn't really tell me like, dude, it's bad. Right. Right, they, they they always was upbeat and and, and the, the partners was always really you know like you 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 recover. I never thought I was gonna die, right? But I could have died, right? But I didn't. I was dumb enough, <laughs> to, right? Said so that's you know, been tripping on that, right? Dude, I had a show booked here in Atlanta. Uh, it was it was it was a, it was a TV a TV program. They had to shoot a comedy half hour. 
And I'm like, yo, I'm like, I got a, I got a show. You're right. I mean, y'all got to get me out of here. Right. Right. And then, this is how, that you're in your own head. So, uh, Bill Bellman came out uh, to see me in the hospital. And he came through. He was like, Rod, I just had to put my eyes on you, man. Because we had lost another friend of ours while I was in the hospital. He said, man, I had to see you, man. Man, don't go nowhere, man. I'm like, all right, I'm good. And then they called me like the next day. It was like, yo, uh, we're going we're gonna to put somebody else to your spot. Just get well. And I was like, this is Bill over here, spy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 he's spy, right? You know, so, but, but now I look back on he was a spy. I was just, I just wasn't ready, right? You know, and uh, I would hate for people to have seen me in that state, you know, because, you know, you, you got some bad things. You know, and, it, and it, 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 change, it changes you, man. You know, when people have to help you, you can't help yourself. Right. When people, like, the, I, I, I stop my shows now and shout out medical people because you do not respect medical people to be in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And somebody, the people are angels. The, the CNA that wiped my butt is amazing. Mm-hmm. And not only did she do it, she did it in such a way where I didn't lose my dignity. Right. You know, she cleaned me off. She made sure I was clean. You know, that that stuff, when, when you can't help yourself, mm-hmm. and somebody's standing that gap to help you, that's amazing. I got to see that firsthand. Right. Yeah. Now, you said that you're an ambassador for American Stroke? Or? American, oh, American Stroke. Okay. They, they kind of, American Stroke Association and American Heart Association go hand in hand. Right. So, uh, and I, 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 get, I do like, uh, like I did, that, did a national event last year. And uh, I just signed on today, actually, to do a, another uh, stroke event in uh, Baltimore for, for uh, Johns Hopkins. Right. And, um, you know, I, I just I just try to tell my story when I get a chance, man. And, and uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come and chat with you today because, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a real deal. And it, if somebody can hear my story that's had a stroke and can make it another day, and go if that dude can if that dude can recover, I can recover. Mm-hmm. Or if somebody can hear my story and not have a stroke, right? Then then that's a win, right? Yeah. I th- I think I think in every way, shape, and form, like you went, in, like I, I think it's amazing that you're able to talk about this. Like I, I love the fact that you're taking your experience and you're pushing it out to so many other people right. for them to be able to see what's going on and to ulti- ultimately help them in their lives. I appreciate you for the talk today. Of course, I, obviously, this is the second time that we've talked, but now I got to meet you place to place. Hey, you're right I here. It's really, really cool. I appreciate you. Right. Um, talk before we end. What's 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 coming up? What's what's, what's coming up? Uh, what, what's coming up? We got we got a few things coming down the pipe. I got my um, my comedy album. Uh, it, it'll be out in the streets called Survivor. Okay. It'll be out. Uh, it, 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 the, the, the comedy that came from this is on there. And, uh, I actually, uh, mimicked the, uh, the Richard Pryor album cover when they had a drawn on there. Okay. I mimicked that and, uh, instead of Wanted, it's Survivor, Rodney Perry. And, uh, that's coming down the pipe. Um, uh, uh, the show I, I'm on about to you, Family Time, is coming back for a, a, a seventh season. Um, excited about that. Uh, doing some producing. Uh, I, I just worked with uh, Donnie Simpson to make a comeback. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're, they're I had an opportunity to meet him at uh, Essence Fest. The nice like, guy. Real, real cool. The nicest guy in the world. They're doing a reboot of Video Soul. Oh, so I got, I got a producer on that. Okay. You know, I got a mentor that really brought me into the producing game. And, um, Serious satellite. Uh, I'll be doing a show over there on uh, Kevin Hart's network. Okay. And so we're waiting on that. We're going to pull the trigger on that. But that should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Now. I think that's amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, when are you back in Cleveland? Or are you coming back to Cleveland? When are you coming back to Cleveland? Uh, it's about time. So I would say at least by the summer. Okay. Yeah, I, I love Cleveland probably. And they, people come out with Cleveland. Right. Like every comic has his cities. Cleveland's one of my cities. Right. I, I'll be looking for you, man. I appreciate you. Sam Sutter's my man. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Hey, man, again, appreciate it. Yep.